All right, everybody, what's up? And welcome back to part two of our Draconic Evolution Mod Spotlight and Tutorial Series. Last time we covered ore, how to find it, how to process it, the power tools, as well as the armor, which I am demonstrating here, and they look mm, wicked awesome. This week we're going to talk about miscellaneous awesomeness blocks. There are a ton of them. They are so cool. We're going to talk about some Draconic Power, some portals, and we're going to finish off with a little talk on some mob farms. So sit back and enjoy the show. This totally amazing mod is brought to us by Brandon3055. Go check him out, Brandon3055.com, twitter.com slash Brandon3055. And of course, and most importantly, he's on Patreon. So go give him some love. All right, before we talk about Draconic Power Awesomeness, Zuma Goodness Portals, and Mob Farms for All, we're just going to talk about some of these awesome, legit other blocks that I have labeled Miscellaneous Awesomeness. The potential meter outputs a redstone signal from 0 to 15, and it can be adjusted by clicking or shift clicking. The rain sensor emits a rain a redstone signal when it's raining out. The distortion flame is actually very expensive to make. Um, if we take a look at the recipe real quick, uh, for another stars, go watch our another star uh, farm tutorial, and they won't actually be expensive anymore. Uh, but if you move it, you break it. So you basically put it down, one, but it lets you see through the world. So you can either look through somebody else's base or use it to find um, the hidden rebel base. The draconic chest is a huge 234 slot chest that also doubles as a high speed furnace that can auto smelt. You can have locked in stuff. Um, your input output can be locked in. You can smelt five things at once and it doubles your ore and glass for whatever reason, glass, thank goodness. Um, it actually has a built-in crafting grid and you can shift click to change the colors. It's actually so big I had to change my GUI scale, but we can see here that it'll smelt five things at a time. Um, if it gets stuck, every once in a while it gets stuck, you just got to kind of like trigger it. Um, and again, uh, it, it'll, it'll depend on what's going on. You can actually um, use it as a crafting grid. You can lock your output so not, nothing can go in these last five squares um, so that you always have a room uh, or a spot rather for your output. Um, when we were doing our base, we needed like so much sand. So this, we had one of these cranking. Um, you just put energy next to it. It'll absorb up in there and you can do auto smelting and all that awesomeness. And it has built in or doubling. So totally awesome. You can change the mode over here. So it'll only pull the currently smelting items. That is what I manually put in there. You can like lock it. Um, you can have it say, keep the current stacks in your full, or it'll, if you click all, it'll actually smell anything in the chest that's smeltable. So once it plows through all this it'll smelt these gold powders and everything for me um, and it'll do that all automatically again five at a time so it's really it's really quite an awesome awesome chest and you can actually tie this thing directly into applied logistics if you have you can put an interface on one side to dump recipes into it and then an import bus to pull stuff out of it um, definitely awesome you can actually for whatever reason you need to color these you can shift click and you put it in color edit mode and if you look down in the bottom left hand corner of my screen right now it's giving you instructions on how to actually change the color of the draconic chest itself the item dislocator and awakened item dislocators are item magnets that suck items into your inventory the normal one will do eight blocks away the awakened one will do 32 blocks away and this is actually smart enough. It won't suck in AE2 seeds, which is always a problem. People run by with magnets and just rip all your seeds out of their um, out of their little water baths. Um, so you can actually configure that in the configuration file for this for this uh, mod. You can add other items that won't get sucked up. Um, to enable it, you just put it in your hotbar, hover over it, and shift and click with it, and you can see it changes. Oh, I just pulled a bunch of eggs into my inventory. The safety match and the book of safety matches actually let you start a fire that won't destroy your entire base. It won't spread, it won't burn anything down. The particle and beam generator is actually gonna be used in a bunch of the other multi-block stru structures. It's gonna be used in the, in the power core multi-block structure, but it can actually do other things. So if you open it up, there's this multiple page um, interface of stuff that you can do. You can change the color, you can change, I have it configured right now to output a little beam. You can actually, if I go over one, um, you can you can crank that length way up. And if we look again, 
it's now three and a half blocks long. It goes right. You can use this to make awesome little things that like beam particles out. Um, this is a beam version. You can actually have it spit little particles out everywhere um, to make it look like something, a laser's grinding through stuff or whatever. Um, have beams of power looking like they're configuring uh, your base and, and pumping power everywhere. Pretty cool. Um, totally visual. Doesn't actually do anything unless you're using it in the multi block structure. The weather controller turns rain on and off and can actually generate thunderstorms. And you use, um, if you want, you can use the rain sensor, which we already talked about, to automatically toggle this so that anytime it's raining, you can immediately turn it back off. It uses emeralds. You just grab emeralds and put them in here, and you then you just say whatever you want to do. And then all you do is apply a redstone signal. It'll change the front facing there. And if I... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh my gosh. That's what happens when you put these blocks too close to each other. We'll talk about what just happened right what now. What we just witnessed was the sundial. And the sundial, I'm going to have to crank the volume down for this. The sundial lets you change the time of day. And let me just go ahead and set it to midnight. So it's midnight out. And if I turn my night vision off, see how dark it is. The sundial. Okay, well actually you apply a redstone signal and it will um, change the time of day. So if I turn the redstone signal. Freaking awesome. Use the daylight sensor to keep it always daytime. It's so awesome. All right, the generator is a basic power generator um, that can generate up to uh, 80 RF per tick. You just put stuff in there that burns and it will use a power generator. The disenchanter will actually rip enchants off of items and um, <laughs> give you a book with the enchant uh, that you can you can basically pull enchants off of items that you already have. When you're doing normal mode, it does have uh, it does actually damage the item. So if you're pulling a bunch of enchants off, there's a risk that you're going to actually break um, the item itself. So be careful with that. While we're on the subject of enchanting, you can actually use um, draconic blocks. They actually have an enchant power of four, so you can actually use them to. Um, well, it's a bad example, but there's a level seven. You can actually use them to increase the enchant power. I think of things. Uh, Last but not least in our miscellaneous awesomeness section is this thing called the player detector. And there's two versions here. There's the player detector and the advanced player detector. Um, the player detector, just you right click for the range and you can see it changing down in the corner. The advanced player detector um, lets you do whitelist, blacklist. You have a range up to 10 blocks and you can actually camouflage it. So we can change the range in here. We can whitelist players. You just click and type their name aim derpson and hit enter and now aim derpson can use this um and then if you want to invert the redstone signal so that um depending on your whitelisting your blacklisting you can click this little button to change that um, what this means invert output inverted true so it's going to output a redstone signal until i come near it and then it'll stop um, and then of course you can camo that block so you just put whatever you want to camouflage it with and it now it looks so you can you can actually make it um, blend in if I put this in here you can make it blend into your wall and now in theory nobody would know it's there and then what's cool about this is that so I have a range set here and I'm I've added myself to the whitelist if I walk near this woo, the secret doorway and what's this magical portal <laughs> all right now let's talk about some draconic power awesomeness Draconic Power adds a couple different power blocks into this game, and one of them is actually a huge multi-block structure that we're going to talk about. But one of the things that it adds that are freaking awesome, they're just so cool, um, are these crystals, these energy crystals that we can see off to the left. Now, there's three different types of these crystals, and then there's like normal of the three and advanced of the three. So there's a relay, which will actually relay power in between the transceivers, which is the second one in the column. The transceivers, as we can see demonstrated here, are put on something that they are going to draw from and on something that they're going to input into. Um, then there's the wireless transceiver, which um, actually is being demonstrated here. If you look at where I'm highlighting on the video screen, it's actually wirelessly able to transceive. So um, 
Let me just stop and clarify for a second. The wireless transceiver lets you freaking wirelessly power things. You do not need to run energy cables. It can go through walls. It can go through everything. It's, it's freaking wireless power. Let me actually zoom in um, really quick on some of this stuff. So to demonstrate the fact that this is wireless, this wireless transceiver is linked down to that energy uh, trash can down there, and it, it's just going to straight pump it through. It's actually also connected to... Um, each of these and you can see that um, there's no there's no power cables that are connecting any of this stuff together that thing is actually going to send over as needed these little particles indicate how much power is being sent so it's, it's barely trickling over there um, it's actually connected to the grinder as well um, and this is going to wirelessly power that stuff it's it's really 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 cool um, here's the transceiver and if we look down in the um, the uh, bottom right corner of my screen. That's actually movable. That little um, thing down in the bottom right corner, if you hit C, configure your HUD elements. Again, whatever your key is, mine just happens to be C. Drag and move that. Um, and then now we can see that the energy transceiver it stores RF. Um, I think it's like 10 million RF. Um, it, it has different modes. It can be input or output. And then the advanced ones can do five times input and five times output. Um, this is going to tell you how many connections it has. The advanced ones can have up to four connections. And so this is actually connected to this advanced energy relay. The, the energy relays, I don't know why that keeps fading. That's kind of annoying. Um, the uh, energy relays themselves can have 20 connections. And this is really cool. I, I love this about this. Um, what this beam strength is showing is how much energy is actually being sent through the network. So if I crank this thing down and I say... Oh, this is going to take forever. Let me just crank this way down and then be right back. Okay, so here we go. The internal buffer is kind of running out. But you can see that the uh, the signal strength or how much power is actually flowing through changes the beam strength. So it gives you like a visual indicator of just how much power you're actually pumping through. Um, and the beam will actually go between all of the things that are connected. Um, so how you actually link them is with this one tool to rule them all and with the scepter bind them and that's just a uh, crystal binder which is really cool um when you hover over the crystal binder in your hot bar it's going to show you all the links all the connections between all of the nodes um it does not unfortunately for whatever reason show you the wireless links between so for example this is actually connected to these three blocks but you can't tell that for whatever reason it doesn't uh, display that so you just need to keep track of wh uh, what's linked to where the uh, device itself will tell you where the wireless connection is so it's telling me xyz and co coordinates um, of those of those blocks the crystal binder when you get it in your hot bar you can shift click and it changes if you look down in the bottom left hand corner it's going to have a bunch of different modes um, it will either mode change is actually a mode of the binder. And when you click on one of these tools, watch the mode where it see I'm, I'm pointing to my screen, but watch well, that's where it says mode input. Now it says mode input five X transfer. So it's actually going to transfer power five times faster. And basically what you're doing is you, you change the, um, uh, the setting of each of these crystals with this crystal binder. Now a note on input versus output, you are inputting into the crystal. So if you're drawing power out of something and into the crystal, you want it in input mode. If you're going to take from on this other end, for example, these are going to be in output mode because they're going to take energy that they are receiving from the, the crystal network and pump it into whatever they're connected to. So those need to be in output mode. Now, we'll notice that these are just regular energy transceivers, so they don't actually have output 5x. You need the, uh, you need the advanced ones to be able to do that. Um, then the, another mode is to bind. So if I go, let me just actually do unbind all. And I just, what I did, the unbind all mode, unbind will let you unbind single connections to devices and unbind all. When you click a crystal, it'll unbind everything that's actually connected to that. Um, so then when we go back to bind mode, I can say click one here. Whoops, I was already connected to something, sorry. Um, click this guy and bind him there. And then click this and bind him there. Click this guy, bind him there. Or maybe click this guy and bind him down there. <clears throat> so that's what you can use um, the different positions. And when you're connecting wirelessly, let's go back to unbind all. Click that. And then go back to bind and bind. Now those devices are linked and bind. Whoops. This, for whatever reason, the wireless one stores. So you just got to watch out for that. 
and then we bind that guy down there and now those devices are linked the advanced wireless transceiver can be connected to up to six of the different crystals at once from a range of up to 50 blocks away and it itself can wirelessly connect and power up to 16 blocks um, 16 that is devices from a range of up to 30 blocks away the basic normal blue version of that is roughly half all right, another block that we've actually already seen in the previous part of this tutorial is the energy infuser. And you can actually use it to charge anything that has that, that holds charge. You can use it to charge uh, your draconic tools. You can use it to charge anything, even if it's not a draconic, um, a draconic block or item. But let's just put a creative cell here, and it's going to charge an internal buffer that holds um, 10 million RF. And if we put, for example, our draconic pickaxe in there, it drains it really quick. This thing can actually charge... Um, pretty quick. If you tie them directly to your uh, energy power cores or something like uh, cryostabilized flux duct, um, it can actually accept power really, really fast. And here, this see, it transferred everything immediately to the draconic block. You're going to be able to use these. This is really only the effective way uh, to charge up draconic blocks. You need 100 million RF, if you remember before, to get a charge draconium block. So energy infuser is probably uh, the best and easiest way to actually do that charging. All right, and one of the short of the uh, the fusion reactor. This is probably one of the sexiest blocks that this mod adds. This is a tier one energy core, and just the basic tier one holds 45 million RF. The tier seven holds 2.45 trillion RF. Um, and if you think that's a lot of power, just wait until you start doing some of this stuff. It, it is a lot of power. Um, it, but there's, uh, the fusion reactors and wait till, uh, 110 when fusion re when fusion, um, crafting comes out and you need something like 15 million RF per, per operation. This thing is going to be able to store an absolute crap ton of power. So to actually create the energy orb multi-block structure, you're going to take this energy core and put it in the center of your structure and place these particle generators at each of the four cardinal points. Um, make sure that there's nothing actually in the way. And when you try and, uh, with an empty hand, shift click on any of these particle generators, it'll try and activate. If it says invalid configuration, go back and check again. There's no indication of what exactly is wrong. So you have to kind of go back and look at everything you've done. When you shift click and there is a valid configuration, you should see your energy core come online. And just to give a demonstration of what the next tier is going to look like, we're going to take some draconic blocks place it at each of the cardinal points these blocks as well as redstone blocks in certain configurations are allowed to go in between and when you shift click you now have a tier 2 energy core which is capable as that is displaying of 273 million rf each of the different versions of this we're going to do a separate tutorial on how to do this each of the different versions requires a different layer if you look in the draconic um evolution little manual which is getting updated but if you look at this it will actually tell you um, there's a, a section down here on the uh, let me just get down to it the energy storage multi-block and it will show you each of the different patterns that you need to use to make the different versions so and here's here's what I was saying before you need to get your draconic uh, you need 218 draconium blocks so you in order to make the tier 7 so just watch out for that. Um, make sure you're, you're grinding everything when you're when you're getting your ores, which we talked about at the beginning of the tutorial. All right, so let's talk quickly about how to get power in and out of the energy core. And these things are called energy pylons. And if I just break this really quick here, um, each of these energy pylons has a mode. And if you look, um, there's little arrows and everything that are going to kind of give you an indication of what the mode is. But you just put a piece of glass over it and see the arrows change. So now this is going to take and output and then this one is input and if you just right click on one of these it'll actually change the mode so you have one that pumps stuff into the core and one that pulls stuff out of the core and then i just put these puppies in an endless loop so that we can see um, the cool particle effect of stuff power going into the core and then getting pulled back out of the core these energy pylons can actually be um, connected to any sort of energy thing you can connect them to flux duct you can connect them to tesseracts now our recommendation personally is to do either tesseracts or cross stabilized flux ducts and the reason for that is because the energy transfer rate is unlimited so they can for example if you're moving your base or doing whatever and need a ton of power these things can actually pull out all 2.14 billion or trillion 
um, RF that's stored in the power core instantly. So use these things are the energy pylons themselves are unlimited transfer and go for the Tesseract or the cryostabilized stabilized flux duct, as, <coughs> excuse me, as those are also uh, infinite transfer rate. All right, now let's talk about freaking draconic portals and teleportation in draconic evolution. This is like, this is so cool and it's so freaking useful. Um, we're going to spend a little bit of time. We're going to talk about the charm of dislocation, the enhanced charm of dislocation, how you can use those to create these permanent draconic portals and even these little dislocator pedestals. All right, so the basic charm of dislocation gives you 20 uses. You can only use it 20 times. You link it to one location. You just grab a charm of dislocation. Um, this one is not currently bound. So you basically just grab it in your inventory and you shift click and it will bind it. Now it binds it to your location, your um, uh, dimension and your angle that you're you're viewing in. So if I, if I run over here and you just take it again in your hover bar, uh, your hot bar. And if I just click this, I'm aimed like, let me just aim way over here. Now, if I click this, boom, it puts me back where I was and faces my, my cannons back in the same direction as it were. Um, you can take these and put them on a dislocator pedestal. And the advantage of doing that is it's now free. You don't have any sort of limitation and there's, um, you can use this as many times as you want. Just run up and click the pedestal and you can do that as many times as you want. And that basic one will never break. Um, the um, enhanced charm of dislocation actually has infinite uses. You just need to refuel it with ender pearls. You can actually store a hundred locations instead of just one. You can use them like the basic charm. You can use them anywhere in any dimension. Um, it stores your X, Y, Z and aim. And the cool advantage of these is, let me just get to it in my hotbar. Um, if you shift click, you can actually have a bunch of different locations that you can store here. Um, again, you can go cross dimension with this. So um, if you left click, it changes what the default is. So when you just have it in your hot bar and you right click, it'll take you to whatever your, your current default. Um, you just click to change that. Now we're at a scenic overlook and you see how this is instant. It's really, really cool. You can actually keep your default to whatever you want and then simply right click to teleport. Um, to the different locations. And of course, this is going to work um, cross dimension as well. We can use it to go, let's say we wanted to go to the end. We're going to be able to do that. It's normal transport time. Every time you teleport to any one of these locations, it's going to use a single um, ender pearl. No matter what dimension you're going to, it's still only going to use one ender pearl. Um, to recharge that, all you need to do is grab some ender pearls in your inventory. Let me just go ahead and grab a stack here and then I'm going to throw half a stack out and I'll explain why. Go into this thing and hit add fuel. If you shift click add fuel, it'll add stacks. And then you'll notice how down in the corner it's saying that I'm out of ender pearls. It's because I'm shift clicking. For whatever reason, it, it's not smart enough to differentiate. But if you then release the shift key, because you notice that there's still eight ender pearls left in here. So it definitely still has fuel that it can add. Um, don't hold shift and it'll add them one at a time and you can kind of see those going into the um, thing here and I have 648 teleports I can do before I have a problem so just keep an eye on that um, you can lock these so that you can't actually accidentally overwrite um, if you needed to overwrite uh, let's say you want to overwrite aim derpson um, see how these are blocked I can't rename them I can't change them I can't remove them but if I unlock it then I can actually set the different uh, the different locations um, when they're unlocked and you can store a hundred and you just scroll through here to get to your hundred different uh, teleportation locations. Draconic portals are like enhanced version of the dislocator pedestal and the charm of dislocation combined. It's just like a frame of draconic infused obsidian, which hint, hint, is wither proof and then a dislocator receptacle. You can shift click to get the charm back out of the dislocator receptacle and then to actually en enable the portal you just actually slap the uh, dislocator receptacle in there and then you can just kind of run through it Whee! now these are particularly awesome because you can have them any shape and any size and if i get close enough um they will actually work for creatures take a moment to think about that you can teleport creatures with these it actually works for items too if I can get this to work um, 
I really don't recommend doing that. Oh, crap. No, that chicken's been floating there for days. And I accidentally bumped him out. Uh, the other cool thing is that if you slap... <sighs> creature, let's see if I can get this bat. Ah, crap. If you punch something... Oh, I'll get one of these sheeps. There we go. Boop. It'll actually <laughs> teleport the entity if you click it. So that is portals. Really awesome. Use it to make like a nexus for everybody's base. You can have everybody have a little portal, dislocator, pedestal, um, whatever. You can use it for mob mob farms. Remember how they're witherproof? Witherproof mob farms. Okay. There's probably going to be a tutorial coming on that. Spoiler alert. All right. That is portals. Freaking awesome. I use this thing all the time. This charm of dislocation is always in my hot bar. All right, let's talk about mob farms because DE does everything. It also does mob farms. Now, the advantage of a Draconic Evolution mob farm is going to be the fact that you can actually um, use spawners that are in the world. So if you're like dungeon diving and you find a spawner, you can actually store that and capture it and keep it. Um, they do not use mob essence. They do not use power. They are controllable by redstone signal. You can upgrade them if you're looking at the upgrades here. Um, the Wyvern Core will make it fast. The Awakened Core will make it stupidly fast. If you slap it with a Nether Star, you no longer need to be in the same chunk. If you slap it with a Golden Apple or a Notch Apple, um, it removes the spawn requirements, which means you can spawn Wither Skeletons in the Overworld or Cows in the Nether, whatever you want to do. Um, <clears throat> in order to use them, you're going to take a regular Mob Spawner. Oh my gosh, that's not the one I meant to do. And you just hit it with a Draconic Core, and now it's a Stabilized Mob Spawner. And I really, <laughs> I don't want this guy to spawn. You can control it with a redstone signal. Now, once the mob spawner has been stabilized, every time you move it, you're going to lose the soul that is captured inside of it. Um, and souls are found by killing creatures in the world, either with a regular um, sword. They have a very, very rare chance to drop. It's like one in a thousand um, for a, an aggressive mob and one in 800 for a regular mob. You can use draconic weapons to increase that or use this reaper enchant. It has uh, reaper enchant one through five. And you can enchant any of your weapons um, to have the opportunity to drop a mob soul. Now, the uh, spawners that you find in the world will actually come with a mob soul once you um, once you hit it with a draconic core to stabilize it. Um, but every time you move it, you're going to lose it. So when you find them in the world, use a diamond dolly to move it into place first before you stabilize it. Um, because you can move um, unstabilized ones with a diamond dolly. Just grab it. Uh, it's from the Java uh, Barrels mod. You just move it around. And then once you get it in place, once you put it in your mob farm, for example, then hit it with the Draconic Core and stabilize it. And then you can start adding your cores. And this is going to be super dangerous to, <laughs> to do. Um, and then I honestly don't think I can... I can uh, crap. This is where the Draconic Staff of Power comes in handy. And there's, hey, there you go. That's what a mob soul looks like. Grab this puppy. Here's a, here's a giant mob soul. And when you move and break a spawner, um, so if I get, let me get a blaze spawner here. Let me get rid of that and grab a blaze spawner. Um, once you've stabilized it with a draconic core, you can actually grab any mob soul and click it in there to change. Uh, let me just grab this little guy. And you just put the mob soul into a stabilized mob spawner. And that's what actually changes the mob spawner to be able to, to do any of these different types. Passive and aggressive mobs will drop mob souls. The default is a chance of one in a thousand for a, uh, an angry mob. And then a passive will be one in 800. It's, that's like really, really rare. Um, so I would recommend if you're a server owner, um, we have ours configured to do 80 and 100 respectively. Um, and that increases it to a more normal level when you have a ton of people you don't want, you don't want everybody trying to farm like wither skeleton. It's just really, really, um, it's just really, really rare. All right. So let me make a comment really quick about the math regarding the Reaper enchant levels. And we're going to do some math here on the screen. So you're going to want to pay attention. The, the basic idea is that there's a, a default chance that's in the configuration file in your, uh, config folder slash draconic evolution dot CFG. There is a, an item in there called passive soul drop chance and soul drop chance. And the defaults are 800 uh, kills per one mob soul for a passive and 1,000 kills for an aggressive mob. And the way to increase that is with the Reaper enchant. So all of the Draconic weapons have Reaper built into them. The Wyvern tool has Reaper 1 built in. The Draconic tool has Reaper 2 built in. 
and the Staff of Power, you actually get a bonus and it has Reaper 3. Now you can actually create Reaper books or Reaper enchanted books and put those on your tools and they can be put on the Draconic tools and they actually add. So a Draconic tool which has Reaper 1 built in and you put a Reaper 5 book inside that tool, your effective level is Reaper 6. If you have a Staff of Power and you put a Reaper 5 in there, your effective level is Reaper 8. Now why that's important is because the way the math works for calculating if you're going to get a soul is it takes the default chance and divides it by your reaper level. So if the default chance for a passive, or excuse me, for an aggressive mob soul is a thousand and you have a reaper five book on your staff of power, you're going to do 1000 divided by eight equals 125. And so you have a one in 125 chance of actually getting that mob soul. And that's how the math works on uh, the reaper enchant. The um, Draconic Grinder is going to instantly kill all mobs centered in a 9x9x9 nine by nine by nine cube. Instantly includes the Wither boss. So this is how, go watch our tutorial on the Wither and Nether Star farm. Um, it's going to kill them automatically. The downside is that it there's, doesn't automatically collect the drops. It will not collect mob souls. So when it kills something, um, for example, if I turn this spawner on right here, Actually, I have one in the back that I'll demonstrate. Um, all, everything's going to drop in place, so you're going to need some sort of vacuum hopper to pick it up. You will not get mob souls from this, so you need to gather them on your own with your own weapons first. However, it will drop mob heads. It will drop all the normal mobs, uh, mob drops, and it will drop the XP um, from killing the mob. So it acts as if a player had killed it. Um, and then if you take your empty hand and you shift-click this, you'll actually be able to see all of the particles um, that demonstrate the kill zone of this of this particular device and this guy's getting in a danger zone right there we go danger zone um, and here's a demonstration of the kill zone using uh, the different wool blocks all right if we take a look at this ridiculous setup this is a crazy mom farm we're going to do a video on how to do this and we're going to talk about how to pimp it out and actually kill wither bosses and get nether stars on farm but let's just demonstrate what the awakened core looks like bomb 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 spawns an absolute crap ton of them and spawns them super super fast this has been running for only a little while and we already have over a thousand buckets of liquid xp so watch for the tutorial on that the link will be in the description below and probably annotated on this video all right all you beautiful people of the interwebs that is it for today we tried to cover everything that we forgot in the last one if you're looking for the draconic reactor tutorial there is a separate link for that video we are going to look at the draconic power mod in a uh, excuse me the power orb the different tiers and how to build those in a separate video and we are going to do a separate tutorial on the mob farms and how to tie them in with some portals and make some kill boxes capable of standing as many wither bosses as you could possibly want. With that, we are going to sign off for the day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and as always, check us out in Discord chat if you want to talk to us live and in person. Thanks for watching and stay poised.